Welcome to Billy Review Stuff, where I review stuff. Today I'm looking at Zezray Studios, Combatants Fight for Glory, The Slaughterhouse Brothers, Casus the Crasher, and Thales the Shredder. Uh, at first I was only going to pick up Thales because I thought he had a cooler loadout. I liked his color scheme. I liked his weapons. Uh, I liked I liked, I liked liked the stuff he came with. And I was like, maybe I, maybe I don't need Casus, which I, I just learned how to pr properly commit... <laughs> pronounce that along with Thales. Uh, fun, you know, go look up Greek pronunciations in English. It's it's actually really interesting, but I'm glad I didn't pass on them because again, they are the Slaughterhouse Brothers and they each have mostly the same story on the back of how Casus and Thales were sons of the Slaughterhouse owner Marinos. Uh, these two boys grew up very quickly and very strong for unknown reasons. Gradually, their faces became less and less human and even grew horns. Locals treated them as cursed monsters, while Marinos insisted they had just eaten too much unclean beef. They spent their childhood peacefully under the protection of their families until one day their father disappeared. People began to, began to abuse them and humiliate the two brothers and even throw stones at them. Finally, the tragedy happened. Casus threw two men and Thales, uh, Thales tore five. When the Romans took them away, they were not punished or executed for killing people. Uh, Stolo left them to perform for the arena. The Ludus introduced them as minotaurs from Crete. Casus had the incredible power to easily break off railings and gates of the arena. He was more calm than Thales and was the only one who could stop his brother going mad. People shouted Minotaur to express their love for the brothers, but Casus thought it was more of a humiliation. Thales was very irritable, especially when provoked by the opponents along with the, uh, along with the yelling Minotaur from the audience. People often use this to provoke him in games and then enjoy the bloody slaughtering show. Which is really interesting since uh, Thales was a, a Greek philosopher and just to have where it's like, yeah, you know, it's like monstrous and tear things apart but you know what i got a lot of sympathy for, for these guys i love monsters i love monsters with good backstories so let me get them out of the box and let's take a look at the slaughterhouse brothers all right before anything else i'm gonna get to the minotaur feet on these figures the minotaur feet do have where they're they're well designed you know it's like it's it's like a a foot in the tippy toe you know the um bop 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 i can never remember it's not bipedal. It's digigrade. Dig One day, I'm going to remember that now because there's so many freaking monster and weird animal characters and stuff like that. But um, they have where they're clearly labeled either right or left. They're easier to read on Thales than it is for uh, Ca Casus. Casus? Cas Casus? Casus. Um, but it does have like the ball, like a uh, hinge. Here, you can kind of like move it around some. Um, it gets a little bit better once you heat it up. It attaches where the foot goes, obviously. I left the wraps on this one. If you take the wraps off, it might have where you get like just a smidge more um, movement out of there. A little bit of more range of movement. But with having the Minotaur feet on there, you do have to have his knees bent for them to be able to actually look right. Because <laughs> it is a digigrade thing. Um... So yeah, this is this is the best I could get it to look, because uh, again, uh, his his front isn't quite like I wouldn't say it's hindered by the the front flaps or anything like that, but there's only so much you could do before it doesn't quite look right. Um, if you take your time, you can balance him out, but it it does have where it'll be more prone to to falling now. Uh, it is what it is. It's, you know, look more like a classical minotaur that you may have in your mind or be stable. You got to take one with the other. But uh, I'd say this is probably about like his max height right there. Here is uh, Thales without his on there. So in the end, they'll still stand roughly about the same height when you swap out the feet just because you have to have the knees bent. But uh, this has been that soapbox. Let's move on to some other stuff. So before I get too far into the weeds with uh, articulation and other stuff, 
uh, I'm going to say this is the same body that the uh, Red Rhino had. Uh, Katuta. Katu Katuta? It's the same body he had. I'll go ahead and pull him out because I, I, I love him too. He's, these guys are fantastic. Um, same body. Uh, same waist harness. Different belt piece. Um, same forearms. Same forearm there. Um, same leg wraps, same feet, uh, same upper torso, different head. Other than that, these are the same body. So if you missed out on the Red Rhino and you just want one of these big hulking figures to mess with, pick up Thales or pick up Casus because, like, it's getting the same thing. And honestly, I think after reading the bio for him one more time, um, we might get a uh, grayer or beiger tone for this because it does have where in the, the, the back of that it has where he's uh, all pumped up from just uh, raising his core temperature until he turns red with uh, uh, heat and anger. So that's a thing. But um, they do have new unique pieces to him. So he has a bear skull. He has like a... I'm gonna, I hate to say it, maybe it's like a weird kind of bovine goat kind of skull thing, maybe more like a bovine skull, I, I don't know what animal it is, but it has horns, but I'm pretty confident this is a bear skull on here, uh, they do have where they have the chain in the front that is not on Katuta, the, the big red horn, um, they have the fur soft goods on the side, uh, still have where like this is paint different on each one, different color paint jobs on all the strapping, uh, he has a bicep uh, link here that I kind of wish was on the big red horn because that would be like a really neat thing. And I kind of wish this came on him too because it would have been like a, an extra little bit in there. Um, I, I hope Zezre has where they, they see the success in these figures and put out uh, armor packs and weapon packs for this scale just to like beef up any of them. Just anything like give me these pieces, give me those pieces. Give me, give me this piece here. Uh, this, this is really neat. I like it. It has where it's this, just it's, it's a mace attached to his, his arm there. Um, it is loose because it's, you know, it's just floating chain there. But I, I'm actually thinking about taking uh, like a little bit heavier gauge wire and tying it off here and running it through and like maybe trying to get it like pinned in there just so like this is then posable so it can have where it's got like a swing to it or something. It's it's a thing to do on a day off. Not right now, but like, I think this is really cool. Um, another unique thing, obviously, is the heads on them. Um, uh, the, them being uh, where they slowly uh, grew into bovine features for whatever reason. Uh, this is probably gross. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, each of these heads have where they're unique. I, I love them how they look. I love like the bull head. I love the kind of, it's, it's still like a slaughterhouse thing, but like a different kind of like cow bull head there, maybe more towards like a yak or an oxen kind of thing going on there. It's a little, it's different. It's different. It's neat. Um, they both have the articulated mouths. Uh, I love not having to have like a second giant head and pull these on and off and everything. I love having articulated mouths. It's one of my favorite things so far with these. Uh, another unique thing, to this figure, but not this figure, is he has where these slide on, these weapon pieces, these, uh, I, well, not weapons, I mean, like, armaments, um, style, tax, painful pokey things. The painful pokey things slide on his horns. Uh, again, I thought that was something that was actually a piece of the sculpt, because on, a uh, Katuta the Big Red Horn, his, right here, has where it's it's part of the sculpt. I, I mean, like, it would be neat if this come off, but I, I don't mind that it doesn't. So, that's another thing. But uh, going into the basic articulation of this torso, uh, this whole body, this whole buck, um, it has the ball joint at the top of the head. You can go so far to the left, so far to the right. It works a little bit better with these guys since they have where their eyes do face forward and not to the side, like the big red horn. Um... Same articulation where you can about get a T-pose out of them, even though they're super bulked up. They have the butterfly shoulders. It's more going towards forward than back. It's more like you can get them straight. That way you can't get like them super far back. 
uh, twist at the top of the biceps. You can go all the way around if you get it right. Uh, not quite a 90 at the elbow, but he's jacked. It's awesome. It's wonderful. He has that ball joint. Uh, he has that ball and like socket at the wrist here. So you have where it hinges. You can swap out the hands, which should be super easy. There goes a horn ornament. Barely an inconvenience other than that. But again, it has where it's a ball on there. They pop on fairly easy, just like they did with the big red horn. And I'm not going to regret saying that, am I? Oh, I flipped my, flipped my wrap around. Oh, huh. yeah. Fairly easy right there, just like the big red horn. Um, just like with the big red horn, it's, it's waist armor kind of hides how much articulation it has at the waist here. So we'll lock him down. He can go fo so far back. It does open up space there then, but there you go. And you can go so, so far forward. You can see that and take a good look at how much that is. And then there goes the other part. Now I won't have any more pieces flying off. I'm so glad my carpet's not the color of these things. Uh, then he has a twist at the waist. Because that's a ball joint down there. For his hips. Let's pull these apart. Then go. Oh god, it's such a strong figure. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to break it. It's wonderful. Ball joint hips. You can do full splits. You can see them in there. It has like that slight little bit in there. So you can have where you can do like a thigh twist at the top of the thigh because of it. He has those amazing. These are my favorite joints. Because like moving them, it just feels like tight, but not like tight, but not like I'm going to break it tight. It has where the way that's constructed, it just feels good. It feels like how a knee should feel, how a joint should feel on any action figure. Like, I don't think this will ever get loose, knock on wood. Um, these have where they come off if you want to, just like the big red horn. Uh, get your hinge at your foot, so far down, so far up. They're a little warm still, and then also, you know, they, they, you know, can tilt back and forth. So this figure still has where it is amazingly articulated, even though he is big AF. I almost forgot more unique stuff they each come with. They each have their own weapon. Um, they're color coordinated by the wraps on them. Uh, Thales has the cleaver, and then Kasus has the kind of double-bladed axe with a, a pointy pommel at the end. Both really cool. If you want to give one to the other, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's your toy. Do what you want to. Um, they both come with three sets of hands in their own color. Uh, obviously, he has the open weapon holding hands. He has uh, the big mighty fists. And then also, he has the outstretched reaching hands. Um, Kasus has the same ones. And then also have, like, his weapon holding hand here. And his other fist here, since I swapped that out. Now, we can move on to size comparisons. Here's Kasus and Thales with the Big Red Horn. Marvel Legends animated Spider-Man. A Mythic Legion Half-Giant. Mythic Legion's Kalazir. Doug. The biggest purple dinosaur I own. A clock and a neck of prairie predator. A Mythic Legion's Ice Troll. And the super popular Mythic Legion's Valiant Knight. Uh, as you can see, these things, they fit. They fit in your 112 collection. Um, do I think that you need them in your 112 collection? Yes. You know what? These are fantastic. If you love fantasy figures, if you love Greek mythology, if you love monsters, if you love monsters with sad backstories like I do, uh, if you need someone for your Mythic Legions to fight, just to have where they're just a little bit different, maybe you're not big into customizing, or you are, these these are wonderful sculpts, well-made figures, and honestly, they're not going to break the bank for how much they cost. Uh, each of these are on 5K Toys right now for this price right here. I mean... That's not bad. I got these with really fast shipping by default. I had where I paid them off. Uh, let's see here. This today is a Monday. I paid them off last Friday. So I got them in about 
a little over seven days probably. It, it, not bad at all. And you know what? I'm I'm down with the Zezre line. The next kind of monsters they have coming out. And again, I really hope they do some sort of like armor packs and stuff for like this buck. This buck needs more weapons and armors and just neat things and helmets and alternate heads and I love it. I love this. I love this book. This book is fantastic. This is the best thing I've messed with out of Zezre so far, but I've only messed with two things. Well, really three things, four, four things out of Zezre so far. Uh, the, these uh, two figures, the Red Horn and the, the Vlatia. And you know what? These, these guys blow just the normal human figures out of the water. Love them to death. Um, but this has been my opinion. Tell me yours down below in the comments. Do you like them? Do you love them? Do you own them? Do you want to own them? Do you know anything about them that I don't? Can you pronounce Casus and Thales correctly compared to how I'm doing it? Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, not sorry. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.